Good afternoon judges, I am Jin Tuan from Team NYJC and I will be explaining and testing the capabilities of the robot. We have decided to implement a double sensor proportional integral derivative line tracing program using two color sensors. A third color sensor will be used to detect colored markings on the playing field. An ultrasonic sensor will be used to detect distance and proximity of the robot with respect to its immediate surroundings. For the motor configuration, we have decided to use two large motors with the purpose of steering and moving the robot in the desired direction. A medium motor is used for the claw lifting mechanism, while another medium motor is used for the ball release mechanism. The two large motors are positioned to ensure the lowest possible center of gravity while ensuring enough ground clearance to implement the gear assembly. The medium motor responsible for the claw lifting mechanism is situated behind the ultrasonic sensor to ensure sufficient radial clearance for the claw mechanism and to avoid obstructing the ultrasonic sensor's field of view. On the other hand, the medium motor responsible for operating the ball release mechanism is integrated into the side of the ball holder. After extensive testing, we realized that our robot had difficulty tackling uphill inclines, to which we implemented gears. We settled on the medium wheels with a 24 to 40 gear ratio, which provided a compromise between stability, speed, and torque. We used a rimless small disc as the front wheel, so as to overcome speed bumps and hills. To collect the balls on the field, we designed a ball holder to be placed over the EV3 module. We also designed it to have a slight slant towards the rear of the robot, allowing the balls collected to roll towards the back of the ball holder. The ball release mechanism is also integrated into the ball holder design, releasing the balls contained once activated. To ensure that our robot met the requirements imposed by the rulebook, we had to shift the wheels and the gear system to ensure that it lies within the length of a 25cm ruler. The front claw had to be folded during measurement taking. The overall length of the robot is exactly 24.8cm, just within the allowable limit. After constructing the robot, we subjected it to multiple rounds of drop tests, shake tests, and stress tests. We found that the detachable sensor module was held in place by only four lateral studs. Hence, we reinforced it by using two long beams on either sides, connecting them directly to the gear assembly to form a sturdy chest for added rigidity. rigidity. We intentionally designed our robot to have a low center of gravity. This is done by reinforcing the center to ensure that our robot will not tip over when going uphill. We achieved this by adding additional pieces near the main body to increase mass towards the bottom of the robot. As the cables connecting the sensors and motors to the EV3 module would interfere with the operation of our robot, we had to organize our cables by attaching pin pieces onto the body of our robot. This is to wrap the cables around, effectively reducing their length and reducing clutter. Now, I will be explaining the software features of the robot. Firstly, the robot traces the line using PID. A target value is set by calculating the average reflected light intensity value between the white and black surfaces. We will subtract this value from all of our light readings to obtain error. This error tells us how far off the robot is from the line's edge. Since the robot has to decide how much to turn when it deviates from the line, the formula will be that of turn equals to kp error, where kp is the constant of the proportionality controller. From here, we will define turn as the input we are giving to our move tank in EV3 mine storms. Next, I will be explaining the integral part of the PID algorithm. Similar to before, KP will be the proportionality constant of the integral part of the controller. The general formula for the integral calculation will be that of integral equals integral plus error. From here, turn equals to KP error plus KI integral. 
An example is such that if the loop proceeds and the error remains positive, integral will thus increase over time. This contributes to small corrections since the turn will be tweaked through small adjustments with the changing ki integral value. Lastly, I will be explaining the derivative part of the PID algorithm. The derivative accounts for the future, meaning it assumes that the next change in the future error is the same as the change in the last error. The change in the error of the derivative can be accounted for by taking derivative equals error minus last error. The current error will then be saved to the last error so that it can be reused for the next iteration. The new formula for the overall turn will thus be turn equals kp error plus ki integral plus kd derivative. kd represents the proportionality constant for the derivative. As such, this concludes the PID algorithm, such that the robot will follow the line smoothly and adjust itself. While the robot runs outside of the collection area, it will check for the color green near the line and turn accordingly depending on whether it is positioned on the left or the right. If the robot sees two greens at once, it will come to a stop and make a 180 degree turn to face the other direction. If the robot doesn't see any lines for a short time, it will speed up and move forward until it finds a new line and then continue its line tracing. Now, I will showcase the capabilities of the robot. When the robot arrives at the obstacle, the ultrasonic sensor will sense the impending obstacle, causing the robot to steer right to avoid and move around it. The robot is also able to move up speed bumps angled at a maximum of 25 degrees. At the collection area, the robot stops when it sees a red line and is hard coded to collect the balls. The robot will move in a zigzag pattern to sweep any ping pong balls on the playing field and place them in the ball holder. The robot will continuously scan for a yellow or blue line and stop the ball collection process there.